change this up here and we are strewing our mess mama don't allow no easy riders here <laughs> but we do in the basement well although we've both seen easy rider yeah yeah are we rolling we're rolling god that Wonderful. was gold Welcome to our first unboxing of Season 7, and we are really glad to be back, and we're glad that you're watching. We have some mail to open, and we have some donors to thank, and we also have some other surprises. But first, I want to tell you, if you're not familiar with what we notified you of on Facebook, the post office made an error. There was a big pile of packages sitting there for me, and him too, and they didn't tell me they were there. So we've got a big backlog of packages. We have too many, we can't even open them all today. But we will open them eventually. I have chosen the ones with the oldest postmarks, and we're going to open those tonight. Let's get started. We've got a bunch to get through. All right. This is from Zave and Shannon. We've got a couple of DVDs here. Ricky O, the story of Ricky. I've heard about this a lot in our comments page. Yeah. People recommend this a lot. And The Remains of the Day. Basically the same movie. <laughs> I love Anthony Hopkins' fight scene with Christopher Reeves in that movie. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> Shannon picked Remains of the Day and Zave picked Ricky O. He says it has absurd anime with gut-busting fights and terrible subtitles. Terrible subtitles. Oh, the grammar. I also have a DVD from Patrick. Bad Day at Black Rock with Spencer Tracy. Robert Ryan as well. Ooh, Blu-ray. Yes, I have not seen this movie. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Merry Christmas. This is one of my favorite movies from one of my favorite directors. Not only is it a great film, but check out the director's commentary online. Paul Thomas Anderson called it the equivalent of 20 years of film school. We have people who have gone to welcometothebasementshow.com and clicked the PayPal donation button and contributed to support this show. People such as Alfred Roger Patrick, Cy, Shelby, Reed, James, Lindsay, Anthony, David, Martha, Abraham, Luke, Andrea, Thomas, Eric, Elizabeth, Stephanie, Brian, Stephanie... Catherine, Grant, Thomas, Kai, Justin, Elizabeth, Sean, Eli, Shannon, Marie, Scott, Michael, Anne, Jennifer, Samuel, T.A., Brian, Kelly, Illustrations, and Carl, who says, long time fan, first time chipping in. Angela, who says, I'm some random youth, trademark, and soon to be college student trying to do art and film studies. I was just wondering what movies you would recommend to someone trying to directly inject amazing cinematography into their bloodstream. I would recommend the Polish film, Ashes and Diamonds. Raise the Red Lantern. It's a Chinese movie from around 1993. We had a long hiatus. We have more donors to read, but that will be happening, that will be happening later in the show. This is from Justin, who took his kids on the Polar Express ride in Bryson City, North Carolina. Ooh. This is from Graham, Disney Postcard. He wants to know what the first animated movie you remember seeing. I don't remember. Yes, I'm not certain. It might have been The Aristocrats. It might have been this one. It might have been Snow White in some re-release. And there's a letter here from Frank in Slinger, Wisconsin, home of the Slinger Speedway. Frank, I talked to you on the Blame Society live stream earlier this week. This is your letter. It has arrived safely. Let's see what Frank has to say. Frank is letting Mr. Hamilton do the talking. Mm. And he gave us a paperclip. Yeah. Frank says it's nice to see something come from Wisconsin that isn't Derry and Paul Ryan. Amen to that. Hey, he went to my high school. Did you give him a wedgie? No, he was a senior. I was a freshman. He probably gave me one. You actually went to school with him at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Did you know him? No, I passed him in the halls. You know, oh, okay. just like, oh, the handsome guy who's popular. And... <laughs> Frank's in a play over there in Slinger. It looks like it's an original play called A Comedy of Couples, a sequel to Love in Naples, written by a professor. And he's offering us some tickets. Uh, that's a very generous offer. I don't think we'll be able to make it. But uh, break a leg. Break them both. Here we have some Christmas gifts from T.A. Epley. Oh, nice. Mine says, an officially licensed Amcan Tran Con Com Co product with regard to Hell's Kitchen. For Craig, a smelly ticket to Hawaii. What we have here is a DVD of Bob, the complete series. <laughs> the third Bob Newhart sitcom, I believe. Oh, Betty White's in this. Oh, that's, that's nice. She's a national treasure. This is a book. Jack Handy, The Stench of Honolulu. Jack Handy, the... Uh, SNL. Lifer at SNL. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Longer than his deep thoughts. Thank you, TA. I'm afraid I can't tell who this is from, but he or she writes I always watch this one when the air starts to smell of smoke in the skies, turn ash gray. It is something wicked this way comes. Oh, yeah. Have you seen this one? Maybe. Yeah, I saw this a bunch of times when I was a kid. And it is a freaky movie, I will tell you that. And now, viewer questions. Justin Gillies writes, Both of you gentlemen have a way with words and writing. 
And I'm just wondering how you guys deal with writer's block, or most importantly, how do you deal with the doubt that your writing isn't any good? Well, I don't deal with writer's block because writer's block doesn't exist. Writer's block happens when you stop writing. If you keep writing, you won't get blocked. You just write about something else. And eventually, it'll shake loose. Remember, just keep doing this, or keep doing this, or keep doing this, or however you choose to express yourself. Around 10 years ago, I thought I was an amazing writer. I was an unpublished writer at the time. Later, I became a published writer, and now I realize that I have a lot of feelings that I have to work really hard to get around. You're a good writer when you think you're a great writer. You're a great writer when you realize you might not be that good. If you're asking yourself that question, chances are your writing might not be good, but the only way to get better is to keep doing it. Know your flaws. That's how you get past your flaws. And sometimes your flaws aren't really your flaws. Society's flaws, man. David Salados asks a classic question. In your opinion, what movie adaptation of a book matches, if not exceeds, the book it's based on? George Roy Hill's adaptation of Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. If there is a book that's unfilmable, it's that one. And then Hill just knocks it off like it's nothing. It's, you know, it's a movie that's constantly shifting in time, and yet he makes it feel all like one piece. I just thought of one. Yeah, what? Chuck Jones' How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Really? Much better than the book, the cartoon. It had so much to it. It adds so much new story to it. And, um, I mean, the animation is some of the best that he's ever done. Two more packages. All right, then. This is from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. It has a little play on it. Welcome to the Basement Production presents James Mason and James Mason in The Trip. Say the lines, Peter. Yours is too pinched. I don't want improv. Please just say the dialogue as written. Please just say the dialogue as written. Say, li- say the lines. Say the lines, Peter. Peter, Peter, just, just say the lines. Stop hitting ping pongs at me, Peter. Okay. <laughs> Dear Matt, Craig, and Tona, basically he did a different version of the Cinema Immersion Tank. He watched all five John Cazale movies. The Deer Hunter, Dog Day Afternoon, The Conversation, The Godfather, Part 1 and Part 2. It was a fascinating journey with an incredible actor through some of the greatest movies of the 70s, if not of all time. John Cazale has been called the best supporting actor. He sends us from California, Hearst Castle. And also, Man's Chinese Theater. I hope the women get one of those Chinese Theater one of these days. And also from the East Coast, Nantucket. November 17th. Sorry that took so long. Post office. This is from David in Lemon Grove, California. Ooh, this was open when I got it. I hope nothing fell out. David says... You are successful filmmakers, critics, and Darth Vader's, and our views on film are quite similar to his. And he has included two books that he wrote, David Grant. He wrote Sick Day, The Legend of Buster Benjamin, and Home Street, A Life or Death Christmas Carol. Hmm. Wrong way, Matt. There you go. Thanks, David. They always do this. You can lose so much cocaine by stabbing a bag. And I, from what I understand, it's valuable stuff. Have a garrot day. Well, they're wholesome, which is always a hallmark of great rock and roll. Yeah. For a brief announcement before we start looking over our projects. I'm Matt Foley. I live in a van down by the river. Okay. Where's your boss? I gotta speak to him. So I gotta speak to him in all caps. That's their boss. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> Who does he look like? Ray yeah, Stevens? He says he needs to talk to you. Come on, Oats Shred. <laughs> what are they all, what are they saying? Ah, <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Dragon sound has to run. But no, they're just trying to lure people out one by one so they can take them down. My apologies to everyone who knows martial arts out there. I know it's not just going like that. But this movie makes me think it is. Makes me think that playing guitar is going like this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but then when he finished military duty? Lemony fish. What? You are out of band because you are a crybaby. Discount coupons from Sam's Muscle Shop. And garbage, garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage lemonade. <laughs> Around the corner, more garbage is made. Cause we 
Hey, kid. Looking good. <laughs> this movie's making me stupid. Yeah. And my, my IQ is dropping. He's in there every night. This damn gang selling that stupid cocaine. Stupid cocaine. Stupid, stupid. stupid. Well, yeah, there's going to be a luncheon. Yeah. I thought it was a luncheon. Korean fire drill. You just get out of the car and run away. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> this is Sale at JCPenney. <laughs> and in local weather, it is partially sunny today with a 100% chance of ninjas. Come back for the St. Petersburg connection. The Kissimmee St. Cloud link em up. And now, the Ford Report. My quest to watch 13 movies by legendary grizzled filmmaker John Ford in 2018 begins. You've chosen the 13 movies ahead of time? Yes, that list is on Facebook. You can look it up. And also there is a list of John Ford movies I've already seen. The first movie I watched is from the silent era. It is the only silent John Ford movie that I've chosen, and it's The Iron Horse. Have you seen this? I haven't seen any of the silent work. This is pretty much at the dawn of his career, and we see kind of three themes that would endure throughout his career. Tales of the Old West, his problematic relationship with Native people, <laughs> and his veneration and almost deification of Abraham Lincoln. We'll be seeing more of that later. You see so many of these images that are so rooted in our consciousness that they remind you of movies that came after. I see a lot of Heaven's Gate in this movie. I see a lot of McCabe and Mrs. Miller in this movie. And then, of course, there's the AMC television show Hell on Wheels, which is basically a remake of this movie as a series. Really? Yeah, it's all about the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. Is it a soundstage movie, or does he do it out? Locations. Locations, locations, locations yeah. And at times you can't believe you're not watching a documentary. Because the movie was made less than 50 years after the events that it's depicting. So yeah. it's, it's so close in proximity. More than 60 years before Wayne's World, we have the first not joke. What? Yeah. Really? Yep. Well, that was The Iron Horse, and next up is a comedy that Ford did in the 30s called The Whole Town's Talking. The rest of our donors, if you please. Maurizio, Patches, Robert, Rebecca, Kendall, John, Graham, Corey, Jacob, Jonathan, Daniel, Lewis, Jared, Austin, Reiner, Christopher, Joe, Grace, Brandon, Malcolm, Benjamin, Michelle, Dan, Molly, Betty, David, Scott, Maura, Melanie, Brian, Abigail, Kelsey, Alexander, and Emily. Hey, thank you all. So many generous people, they even donated during the hiatus. Hey, very nice. Two more packages, let's open them. This is from Sean up in Victoria, British Columbia. This is from Jeff, Redmond, Washington. You guys are practically neighbors. Oh, I see what this is. Jeff says that he is a big fan of our Rocketeer episode, and so he sent us Ooh. the Rocketeer. Well, wow. is that all of the stories combined, or just the first? Or? I don't know. That's cool. He's got some fun facts here about the story, and um, I'm looking forward to taking a look at this, because as we know, the style of the Rocketeer was more compelling to us than the actual plot of the movies. Yes. Oh, I know this guy, Krampus. Ah! I hope you've been good all year. I hear Krampus is in a foul mood this Christmas. We got out unscathed. Yes. And we have more Christmas goodies here from our pal Sean up in British Columbia. Harper's Weekly. With Wolverines. These gifts are actually for my boy Lorenzo. Damn it! Yep, sorry, Matt. If you want to read them, you can. He's not reading anything yet. According to his card, this one is a Canadian classic called Alligator Pie by Dennis Lee and Frank Neufeld. That is, I know what the pet, what's going to be in the pie. I think it's these three little kids on a balloon with an alligator. Doomed. The Rupert Annual, which is a British tradition, which he got from his relations in England. It's got a bunch of old-timey stories. People oh, that's nice. going on strange picnics. and Oh, it's got a little bear in it, which is nice. Rupert lets Ferdy Fox listen, where Rupert learns how to play. Rupert brings Mummy a gift. Mummy is how they say mother in other countries. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Well, the bad news is that the post office messed up, but the good news is that we get Christmas in February. Yes, and maybe even into March. We had such fun opening up your packages. We always have fun reading your comments and talking to you on Facebook and entertaining you here on Unboxing. You can watch the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. We'll see you then. Now watch this. Wow.
Wow, I never thought I'd say this, but I really want to be listening to 38 Special right now. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm listening to this, and I'm like, they're no 38 Special. <laughs>